Honourable Members, uh, question time will conclude today. <laughs> At 11.44am, I promise, I call the Leader of the Opposition for his first question. Mr Speaker, a question to the Premier. I table a petition to bring back breach of bail signed by nearly 18,000 Queenslanders. They tell harrowing stories of home invasions, sexual assaults, armed robberies and citizens living in fear. Will the Premier now listen to Queenslanders and restore breach of bail for young offenders? I thank I call the, the Premier. Uh, Leader of um, the Opposition for that. Um, we've said very clearly we're not. We're putting over $500 million in youth justice uh, initiatives, Mr Speaker. We've built more youth detention centres and we've passed through our tough new laws um, through this House. Simple change. I call the Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, a question to the Health Minister. The Australian Medical Association says the Queensland health system is, quote, is the worst it has ever been and people are dying in a system that just can't cope. Will the Minister listen to the warnings about Labor losing control of the health system? I call the Minister for Health. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And Mr Speaker, I have spoken at length in this House about the uh, work that is being undertaken by health across all of our hospital and health services and working with external stakeholders as well. Uh, what about, what about the Barrett Centre? Can you close the Barrett Centre? I'll, I'll ask that all, all interjections on both sides cease so that the Minister for Health can answer the question. I call the Minister for Health. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I have spoken at length about uh, the immediate injection we were putting in of the $100 million to uh, help address the pressures we're seeing on our emergency departments and our bed capacities across the hospital. Uh, we have just had the budget handed down this uh, week, which is a $22.2 billion uh, budget for health. Uh, we will continue to... Member for Nanango, I've already cautioned you today you're warned under standing orders. Minister for Health has the call. We will continue to work with all stakeholders, the clinicians, the nurses, health workers, uh, the executive, the board members across the state and external stakeholders like the AMAQ uh, to find solutions to the extraordinary pressures we are seeing. <coughs> extraordinary pressures. You know, once in a generation, circumstances we are facing right now. There we go. There we go. Once again, hiding under the doona. No recognition whatsoever of what is being faced globally, nationally and here locally on our health system. Those on the opposite side are in complete denial. I think it's worse than denial. I think they're deliberately, deliberately downplaying the impacts of COVID on the health system to meet their political... Uh, that's why they're doing it. It's their political agenda to just pretend COVID doesn't exist. It's not having any impact whatsoever. They groan every time COVID's mentioned, like, oh, it's such an inconvenience. Millions of people have died globally. Thousands of health workers around the world have died caring for COVID patients. Leader Every of the time opposition. There is a community transmission and there's restrictions on access to aged care and health care in our hospitals. There is delay in elective surgery. Then we continue to ramp up that elective surgery, but that creates Member for demand Madura. on our bed capacity. And we see significant trauma coming in the door. And I can't stop the trauma coming in the door. We would like to stop the amount of people getting injured on our roads. And the other trauma that we Minister's have... Minister's time has expired. Minister's time has expired. Speaker. I call the member for Lytton. Thank you, Speaker. 
My question is of the Premier and the Minister for Trade. Will the Premier please update the House on what the Palaszczuk Government is doing to grow our booming screen industry and the arts to create even more jobs for Queenslanders? I call the Premier. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I uh, thank the member very much for the question. I know how much she values um, the screen industry and the arts in her electorate, especially when we built those new Hemant Studios. Um, fantastic, Hollywood and Hemant. And uh, Mr Speaker, they used to be the old uh, cotton sheds, Mr Speaker, so it's a great adaptation to use them as permanent film studios, Mr Speaker. And I think I've said in this House before that when they were first built, we were a bit unsure about whether they'd get the continuous bookings, but now they're booked out, Mr Speaker. In fact, Universal Studios has more than um, pumped more than $100 million into Queensland. They've got Young Rock has been filmed there, and now they're doing Joe Exotic. So I'm quite sure that'll be uh, a very interesting, uh, interesting uh, production when that comes to to hand, Mr. Speaker. And um, and Mr. Speaker, of course, we know that it's all the jobs that are involved as well. It's all the carpenters, it's the plumbers, the electricians, the caterers. Um, everybody who's involved in that film industry, and it's giving our young people the opportunity to actually uh, get jobs in this industry, Mr. Speaker. And of course, the budget brought down $71 million um, uh, in the budget, $53 million for production attraction, $4 million for screen finance for domestic film, television, and games production. Mr. Speaker, you'll be pleased, $4 million for the North Queensland Regional Program, which I know you're yeah. our wonderful ambassador up there to grow screen opportunities and, of course, $10 million for post-digital and visual effects. So we want to get more and more movies here, and it's uh, absolutely fantastic to see that's bringing a huge boost into the economy. So uh, we've also got Ticket to Paradise coming up soon. They're just finishing Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. We've had <laughs> Lost City of Gold. Look, so many things I could say about those opposite, but I won't. Um, but, Mr Speaker, we've also invested in the music industry as well. We know that uh, Minister Enoch and my Assistant Minister uh, have been uh, meeting with the music industry, especially those live music industry venues, and we're putting $7 million there to assist them. Uh, that's something very important. I hear there was some live music coming from those opposite last night, but I won't say anything more about that. Not, not good no, no, no. I heard it wasn't very good. I heard it wasn't very good. <laughs> oh! I didn't know it was true. You know, you're confirming it. There you go. I just heard a rumour. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Um, so, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to back the screen industry and the arts and the live music, Mr. Speaker, because we know that it brings about jobs in our local community and we'll always back the arts sector as well. And we also announced $6 million for additional blockbusters uh, for Goma. Mr. The Premier's time has expired. Uh, DJ Mini Minikin will cease his interjections. Julie noted. I call the uh, Deputy Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> um, Mr Speaker, a question to the Health Minister. The Queensland College of Psychiatrists says mental health isn't a priority for Labor, who won't listen and have cancelled meetings for two years. Why won't the Minister listen to the experts' warnings about Labor losing control of mental health? I call the Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the member for his question and I take that interjection from the Premier. This, you know, this question's just come from the party that closed the Bower Adolescent Centre. So um, for, for those to, to criticise... Um, Mr Speaker, in addressing, in addressing the, member, uh, the members opposite, uh, can I say that in 2021-22, the Royal Australian New Zealand Council of Psychiatrists Queensland branch, in their pre-budget submission acknowledged that Queenslanders, like three out of four Australians, <laughs> mental health was impacted by COVID-19. Uh, Leader of the Opposition, uh, if, direct your comments through the Chair. You'll be warned under standing orders. Uh, Minister for Health Mr. has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. They should have read a little bit further down the article that they're <laughs> going to use as their, dick, uh, to their question today, because it said the date that I'm meeting with them. <laughs> So it's, it, you know, but anyway, so I look forward to that meeting that's already scheduled. Uh, but 
Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the two years reference is. I've only been in this role for six months, but anyway. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. But um, the pre-budget submission says to date there's been no increase in the rate of suicide mortality in Queensland since the pandemic started, but health experts warn suicide rates could rise if Centrelink aid, job keeper and job seeker is cut. Like, that's actually what they said in their pre-budget submission. They linked the risk of suicide rate going up to the cuts in job seeker and job keeper. But you don't hear those on the opposite side crying out for any change in that space. Uh, Mr Speaker, the mental health effects of the pandemic will likely extend over the next few years and ongoing funding is needed. That is why, Mr Speaker, we've provided an extra 46 $0.5 million to support mental health and wellbeing of Queenslanders who have been impacted by COVID. This is an additional uh, $61.9 million allocated over four years in our 2029-2020 budget to establish suicide prevention crisis responses Pause the and clock. enhanced services. Pause the clock. Uh, Leader of the Opposition, you will cease your interjections. You'll warn under standing orders. To the members gesticulating in the House, I need no assistance. I call the Minister for Health. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And as I said, we're providing an extra $46.5 million to support mental health and wellbeing uh, of Queenslanders who have been impacted by COVID. Uh, this is on top of our 61.9 over four years in the 2019 budget. We're also working with the federal government to develop a new national mental health and suicide prevention agreement by November 2021. So if those opposite want to see a further injection for mental health support in this state, then they should talk to their federal colleagues and make sure that that National Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Agreement has extra dollars in it to recognise the demand. I'll continue to work with stakeholders and I look forward to uh, meeting with the Royal Australian New Zealand College of Psychiatrists. I call the member for Moneyborough. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is of the Deputy Premier and Minister for State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning. Can the Deputy Premier outline how the Government will create more clean, cheap energy in Queensland and is he aware of any alternative approaches? I call the Deputy Premier. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the member for his question. I know uh, he shares the Palaszczuk Government's uh, vision for uh, Queensland as a renewable energy jobs superpower. Uh, when we came to office in 2015, there were no large-scale renewable projects on the books or coming. Zero, Mr Speaker. And since then, since then, now all over the state, there are new solar farms, new wind farm projects and more and more coming, so much so that we're now in the fortunate position where the Energy Minister is announcing storage solutions yeah, yeah. for all of that extra renewable energy that we are generating so that it can be used and not wasted, Mr Speaker. That cheap renewable energy will lead to a jobs boom here in Queensland. Yeah, yeah. A jobs boom not just in energy but also in manufacturing, processing our minerals here so that they can be exported at higher value, manufacturing uh, the elements of the renewables value chain like batteries and electrolyzers here so that we can use them here but also so that we can export them to the world. And that's why last week we held uh, in Townsville the Renewable uh, the Energy Jobs Forum uh, and why the uh, Energy Minister and the Premier and I announced that we would bolster our Renewable and Hydrogen Energy Jobs Fund to $2 billion yeah. to, to enable to enable that clean energy revolution that is already underway, Mr Speaker. And that forum uh, was very successful and the uh, response to that announcement has been very strong. The Queensland Community Alliance said it, said it was the missing piece for transforming our energy system in a way that cares for our planet, looks after workers and protects the most vulnerable from price rises. 
WWF brought together 25 Australian businesses to say thanks for that investment. They said Queensland is on the path to becoming a renewable energy exports superpower. The Queensland Resources Council, Ian McFarl Council's Ian McFarland, those uh, well-known uh, socialists over there at the QRC, said the fund was an incredible opportunity for Queensland in respect to manufacturing and the demand for new energy minerals. The Queensland Exploration Council said it's great to see the Queensland Government supporting the resources sector from exploration right through to manufacturing. Mr Speaker, all of that, all of that to create jobs right across this state, Mr Speaker. Yeah. I call the member for Mudraba. Mr Speaker, a question to the Premier. It is reported today that the Premier raised concerns about AstraZeneca at National Cabinet in April. Why didn't the Premier tell Queenslanders about this concern, and was this why she delayed her COVID jab? I call the Premier. Premier, you have the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I am not disclosing what conversations happen at National Cabinet. Order! Member for Kiwana, Member for Kiwana, you're warned on standing orders. Speaker. When members are finished. I call the member for Keppel. Mr Speaker, my question is of the Treasurer and Minister for Investment. Will the Treasurer please update how the budget supports reducing landfill and improving recycling? And is the Treasurer aware of any other approaches to recycling in context of the budget? I call the Treasurer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank the member for Keppel for her question. And like all members of the government, uh, the member for Keppel uh, supports ongoing efforts to reduce landfill and improve recycling, as the budget paper shows. Budget paper two. Page 98, growth in revenue from the waste levy is moderating. Speaker, treasurers usually don't like a fall in revenue, but I welcome this. I welcome this, Speaker, because it represents people reducing waste to landfill. It means that our levy is working. Uh, but we do know what the alternative is, Speaker, because uh, we can't forget 2012, when the LNP abolished the waste levy and turned our beautiful state into the nation's dumping ground. Truck after truck, speeding up the M1, waved through by the member for Broadwater to turn Queensland into the nation's dumping ground. And yesterday, yesterday we heard the big budget reply from the Leader of the Opposition. What a letdown. Speaker, he gets worse every year. Speaker, and I see that he sent out, I see the Leader of the Opposition sent out, sent out his, his, uh, his friend, uh, there he is, Deputy Whip up, handing the questions up out the back. Can't take the heat in the kitchen, Speaker. Happy to wave the truck, Stu, but can't take the comments. He sent out his stooge from City Hall, Adrian Schrinner, to attack the levy. Speaker, these councils keep carrying on about a levy that, 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 that the Speaker, a rebate that they've already got. Councils should be so lucky, Speaker. They should be so lucky taking credit for a rebate that the Labor government is giving the households by for them. I don't know. Maybe we should put it on the electricity bill. Do something like that so Queenslanders know who's looking after them, and that's the Labor government. But anyway, Speaker, we know the LNP don't like the waste levy, but we know the Leader of Vision is a big enthusiast for recycling. Why? Well, I know it's bin day up in Lakes Creek this, uh, this, uh, today. Uh, thanks for the member for Keppel. Hello to everyone watching. There is one policy area where the LNP has been doing their own dumpster diving, Speaker. Now, they had the big release yesterday, the big release of the Social Entrepreneurs Loan Scheme. It sounded familiar, Speaker. That's because it was recycled from the Newman government. Now, the, LNP, the LNP's Social Enterprise Scheme is an idea from David Cameron. That's what the member for Toowoomba South was saying, Mr Speaker. It was a reheated policy from 2013. People, you've had eight years to get this right, and you're recycling from things you did eight years ago. Speaker, Through the chair. what have you been doing? I know you are in the nightclub last night, dancing away. What are you doing? You're not doing the policy. The Treasurer will speaker. direct his comments through the chair. Under the gov but no wonder it was under the government of the Leader of the Opposition's idol. 
his idol, Campbell Newman, dumpster diving, pulling out the policy. Oh, a quick conversation with a member for Surface Paradise. Like your tie today. Really appreciate how you've done your hair, Speaker. Look, this is a recycled effort by a hopeless opposition leader who is a complete phony. Mr Speaker. Uh, I might just remind members that uh, whilst it's a uh, convention to not uh, comment on a member's uh, absence from the chamber, I think their movements in the chamber are also not necessarily uh, the appropriate way to go either. I call the member for South Brisbane. Mr Speaker, my question is for the Minister for Communities and Housing. From the $1 billion housing trust announcement, only $40 million per year will actually be spent on social housing. Can the minister explain to the 47,000 people waiting for social housing how 3,600 new homes will be built with only $160 million? I call the Minister for Housing. Uh, I, 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 thank the, I thank the member for the question. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And I think in terms of the uh, fact that the member for South Brisbane, this is only her second ever budget, uh, you know, can give a bit of leeway in terms of being able to understand how budgets work and how that happens. Um, and certainly uh, my office has reached out to ensure that the member for South Brisbane can be uh, fully briefed this afternoon on how to understand how this all works. However, what I think is a little bit harder to understand is why the Greens are on a unity ticket with the LNP on this matter. Peddling this idea, this idea about not understanding how an investment fund works. And we know that's why. We know, we know why it's on a unity ticket. It's because they helped the member of South Brisbane get elected. Honestly, Mr Speaker, the LNP, the LNP and the Greens are so slow. They are so slow when it comes to this whole idea of an investment fund. If they were any slower, they'd need to get watered once a week, Mr Speaker. That's how slow they are. However, Mr Speaker, can I just make it really clear? They don't understand how the fund works, and I'm sure this afternoon the uh, member for South Brisbane will uh, get that information and will hopefully be across it. Uh, this $1 billion housing investment fund is anticipated to generate annual cash returns. Now, this is part of a broader set of investment that this government is making, $2.9 billion, uh, the largest concentration of investment in social housing in this state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not just about building, it's about spot purchasing, it's about head leasing, it's about partnering with the private sector, it's about uh, pri uh, partnering with the community housing sector to generate enough stock to see nearly 10,000 uh, new properties uh, uh, added to the stock over the life of our strategy. So it's, it's a whole a strategy, a whole action plan that's looking at uh, lots of innovative ways to build housing stock in this state. Now I see the member for South Brisbane continue to shake her head. It's looking very similar to what the LNP do very regularly when we talk about social housing. Uh, they continue to be on a unity ticket. It's a great shame, Mr Speaker, but this side of Parliament, this government, the Palaszczuk government, will continue to be very proud of the massive the investment we've South. made to social housing. This morning, the Treasurer and I were at the breakfast that was hosted by QCOS. Let me tell you, Mr Speaker, the sector is absolutely ecstatic with this announcement, this announcement and they absolutely fully understand how it works. Uh, for we are South. proud of this announcement, we are proud of this investment in social housing, and the sector is absolutely ecstatic, Mr Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I call the member for Tui. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question is of the Minister for Education, Minister for Industrial Relations, and Minister for Racing. Will the Minister update the House on how the budget supports the expansion of outside school hours care services, and is she aware of any alternative approaches? <laughs> I call the minister. I thank the member for Tui, and as a father of two young boys, I know that his family often would um, use and welcome the outside school hours care arrangements in his school, and our $15.3 billion investment in schools and early childhood education is delivering for Queensland families no matter, no matter where they live as part of our economic recovery plan. <laughs> and, Speaker, our economic recovery plan has delivered jobs, jobs, jobs in this state, and there are a beautiful set of figures that we've talked about here earlier on today when it comes to employment growth in this state. Can I say with numbers like this, 
we are continuing to support working families with the services they need to participate in the workforce. As many members in this House would know, the workday doesn't necessarily end when the school bell rings. For women in particular, who still carry the primary caregiving responsibility outside school hours care is crucial to their full participation in the workforce. That's why I'm delighted to advise that our record 2021-22 education budget allocates $11 million to expand or upgrade outside school hour care facilities at 48 schools across the state, from Parramatta State School in Cairns to Corumban State School on the Gold Coast. And I'm very pleased to be working closely with the member for Keppel the Assistant Minister for Education, who is overseeing the delivery of these outside school hours care commitments, which will give parents the assurance that care is available for their children if and when they need it, before and after school, and often during school holidays. Outside school hours care was one of the first issues that actually crossed my desk when I first became um, Minister for Education Speaker. And since 2018, we have seen well over 5,540 extra outside school hour places delivered and created in state schools right across the state. We plan for them now in new schools and the member for Caloundra, when we've opened up the new schools, Baringa, we know we plan for those and we just um, visited Caloundra South where outside school hours care is being planned in the building of those schools. And um, it is wonderful to see that we um, are delivering for working families because with many of them now entering the workforce, they need that support. But, Speaker, when it comes to alternative policies, unfortunately there aren't any from those opposite. We have scoured their website. We went back to the election commitments they made at the October election last year, and unfortunately there is not one skerrick of evidence of an education policy from those opposite. If you want to talk about bear covers, Minister's time has expired. I call the member for Ujuru. Mr Speaker, a question to the Premier. Will the Premier confirm the Eastern Busway and Cleveland Line duplication will be included in the 2032 Olympic and Paralympic Games proposal so that the Redlands can have the public transport it needs to provide Games venues? I call the Premier. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. We are working with the Commonwealth on the uh, infrastructure that is needed. Um, well, we are working on that and we have a funding envelope that has been agreed and we'll be prioritising um, uh, within that envelope the projects that are needed to get people to the venues. And of course, the venues are spread out across Brisbane, um, the Gold Coast, uh, the Sunshine Coast, uh, Redlands, Ipswich, um, Logan. There's also going to be there's also going to be a regional participation as well, Mr. Speaker. Um, but what I am very pleased about is the fact that the Executive uh, Board of the Olympics has recommended that the full um, cohort of the uh, Olympic movement uh, consider. Brisbane, Queensland uh, in July, Mr Speaker, which is next month. So fingers crossed, but this would be a great boost to the Queensland economy. It would be decades of, uh, de decades of um, uh, jobs and infrastructure, but also to think now too about the young people who are being uh, selected. And can I congratulate those young people, especially the Queenslanders in the swimming team that have been selected to go over to Tokyo. Um, They've been trained, and sorry, yes, I'll take that injection. 50% in the Paralympic swim team as well. Um, this is going to be absolutely incredible for uh, our state, and I think that we wish all of them very well uh, for next month because um, it's it's going to give the the people of the world hope and opportunity that we can come together during uh, such a, a devastating time that COVID has placed on um, families and individuals. Um, right across the world. Speaker. Speaker. I call the member for Cooper. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is of the uh, Minister for the Environment and the Great Barrier Reef and Minister for Science and Youth Affairs. Can the Minister update the House on how the Palaszczuk Government is delivering practical, sensible environmental measures that are also creating jobs as part of Queensland's economic recovery plan? 
Uh, Minister, you have one minute to respond. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member for Cooper. I know she's a fierce advocate for protecting the environment and the jobs that it creates. I'm very proud in this budget to be uh, the part of a government that's investing $1.4 billion to protect our environment and create jobs. And one of the biggest highlights from the budget is, of course, our funding for the Great Barrier Reef. We know two of the largest threats to the Great Barrier Reef are things like climate change uh, and reef water quality, which is why we're investing significantly. But we also know there's been some fairly interesting views federally from uh, the Morrison government when it comes to climate change, Mr Speaker, and I table some interesting comments we've seen recently. Uh, Senator Gerard Rinnick denying climate change and taking offence now to the Palaszczuk government's increased investment in publicly owned renewable energy, and I table a copy of that for the House. We also have Matt Canavan, who's now questioning the science of climate change as well as COVID-19. We also have the Nationals now saying that they don't, uh, they don't support net zero emissions. So I'm very interested, uh, Speaker, very interest, interested to hear from the Leader of the Opposition who delivered his budget response The Minister's time today. has expired. The period for question time has expired.